In the movie Ex Machina, a computer programmer feels tremendously empathetic towards a humanoid with a female face and cares for her until she cold-bloodedly locks him in a room to starve to death while she goes on her way. And then it becomes very clear that all of the emotional connections that she built with him was simply a mechanism that she used to win over his love. While the plot may seem a bit outlandish, but movies like Ex Machina are actually asking something very philosophical and powerful. They are forcing us to have the experience of being in presence of something that looks and acts like a human but is actually a machine. Combine that with human level intelligence and it becomes very hard not to treat the machine as a person, as a conscious being, even though we don't have any reason to believe that they are in fact conscious. A couple of years ago, Kate Darling, a researcher at MIT, conducted an experiment which tells a lot about this phenomena. She had 5 lovable robot dinosaurs distributed to groups of volunteers. The volunteers were asked to name the robot dinosaurs and interact with them. Then after an hour, they were asked to torture and kill them with a hammer. The volunteers refused to do so. So she and her team started playing mind games with them, saying that if they don't kill a dinosaur from a different group, then their own dinosaur would be killed and destroyed. And the volunteers ultimately gave up and ended up patting their little dinosaur robots. Even though it would seem perfectly normal to hit a toaster with a hammer made of the same synthetic materials as these robots, it's really uncomfortable for people to watch them get tortured, particularly with robots that can display a simulation of pain or discomfort. The way we relate to these inanimate objects might actually say something about us at a very deeper level. Google's DeepMind project created AlphaGo, an AI program that has become unbeatable at the most complex strategy game on the planet with almost 10 to the power of 80 possible outcomes. It played the world's best Go player and beat him 3 times. Sam Harris, an author and a neuroscientist, has some very scary concerns about the future of AI. And at a certain point, we will build machines that are smarter than we are. And once we have machines that are smarter than we are, they will begin to improve themselves. The process could get away from us. At the moment, AIs are focused only to do particular tasks, which is only a concern in an economic sense as they are going to displace people's jobs. Right now, the best Go player, the best facial recognition system, and the best chess player on the planet is a computer. But the goal is to have general intelligence which allows for flexible learning across many different tasks and in many different environments. And once we have an AI that truly has general intelligence, it won't be human level. Why? Well, imagine a super intelligent AI no smarter than the average team of researchers at Stanford or MIT. Now take into account that electronic circuits function about a million times faster than biochemical ones. So this machine would think about a million times faster than the minds that built it. So when you set it running for a week, it would perform 20,000 years of human level intellectual work and it will continue working weeks after week. How could we ever keep up or even understand all these developments, much less constrain a mind making this kind of progress? And if that was not enough, Huho is building the next generation of bionic limbs and robotic prosthetics inspired by nature's own designs. He lost both his legs in a climbing accident 30 years ago. I was in a mountain climbing accident and both of my legs had to be amputated due to tissue damage from frostbite. And now, as the head of the MIT Media Labs Biomechronics Group, he's making incredible advancement in the field. The small computer placed in his prosthetic legs runs algorithms and receives sensory information. The device measures position, speed, accelerations and temperature. All the information goes to the computer. The computer runs algorithms and then decides on the action of the muscle tendon like motor system. It constantly responds to the biochemical needs of the individual, closing the loop between the synthetic robotic limb and the human nervous system. A person can think and send descending commands down through the nerves which are then measured and used to control the synthetic motors on the bionic limb. The sensors in the bionic limb puts information into the nervous system so that a person can feel the bionic limb moving its position, its sensations as a part of your body is that the software keeps getting upgraded. So as the biological human parts of the individual degenerates with time, the synthetic part of the body improves with it. 
As the advancement continues rapidly in the field of science and technology, we are witnessing amazing human capabilities. But these advancements come at a certain cost to people. Scientists and innovators are constantly pushing the line to introduce technologies that is more efficient, cost-effective and less time-consuming than manual human labor. But these are only the threats that we can know of, that we can predict. The real concern when it comes to AI and intelligent robots is an existential one. How far is the day when we start replacing our consciousness into a synthetic robot and live life beyond the physical limitations of flesh and blood? If you guys are new to the channel, then I do encourage you to smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications to never miss a single video on our channel. As well as giving this video a big thumbs up by slapping that like button below. We make content on a wide range of subjects and you can even suggest us the topics you want us to cover in the comment section below.